Hi there, I'm Robin. Now, under normal operating conditions, a turbo can last as long as the lifetime of the engine. When a failure does occur, before you replace the turbo, it's important to figure out what the root cause of the problem is, because a lot of times the issue isn't with the turbo, but with a related system that's caused the premature turbo breakdown. So let's take a look at a few of the things that can cause a turbo to die. Now the primary role of the lubricant is to facilitate rotation and eliminate any possible frictions. Additionally, the oil flowing throughout the elements cools them down, removing heat resulting from the rotating elements and the hot exhaust gases flow. That's why proper lubrication is one of the most critical conditions for the turbo to operate. When it's impaired, severe failures can occur instantly. Here's how the story ends. This turbo broke instantly, right after it was installed. The shaft just broke, causing unrepairable damage to the turbo, which caused the engine to perform abnormally. The main reason for such a catastrophic failure was lack of proper lubrication. The high rotation speeds and the friction within the moving parts caused the temperature to raise extremely. The shaft got super hot and ultimately just broke by seizing. Here's another turbo shaft where you can see the damage in more detail. So if you look at this carbonized black surface here, insufficient oil supply is what caused the overheating here, which made the steel color change. And you can see that here. This bluish to yellowish tint is a heat tint caused by overheating of the steel. Next, the remaining oil will start coking on the surface, which makes these black sinters. And the shaft of this turbo was practically seized and close to breaking, which actually happened on this one. And it all started with oil supply shortages to the turbo. The oil feed line to the turbo is the most common spot where restrictions can occur. Its relatively thin diameter makes it very easy for blockages to build up inside, especially when the line is located close to heat sources like the exhaust, which can cause the oil to carbonize inside. Now, if the tube is bent like this one here, it can't be cleaned and reused. And in many models like this car here, there was actually a special OE bulletin issued recommending to replace the tube along with the turbo. The lubricant quality is also another very important factor. Long change intervals, impaired filtration, overheating, all of these things can impair the function of the lubricant and expose the turbo to premature failure. So here are some examples. Now these shafts got seized too, but it happened despite the presence of oil. The clearly visible grooves on the surface result from frictions and excessive material abrasion provoked by impurities in the oil. Now this could be a worn oil filter, but this one looks like it was overheated, showing the carbonized oil here was the reason for the seizure. Speaking of turbo lubrication, I have to emphasize the oil distribution channels once again. Now we said the feed line must be clear of any blockages, but the cleanliness of the return line is very important too. Here the oil returns gravitationally from the turbo and it isn't pressurized. Clogging the line is equally dangerous. It may cause oil to overpressure inside the turbo, causing the piston ring seals to be blown. This will lead to oil leaks from the part that is in an extreme condition and can cause a runaway engine in diesel applications. In any case, the leaking oil starts reaching either the turbine or the compressor side, causing some further engine or exhaust malfunctions. Now the return pipe has a much bigger diameter, seemingly more difficult to clog. So you see how this is made of rubber? If the heat shield is not installed properly, this can cause burns and may cause line deformation and limited flow. Engine crankcase with high pressure levels can also disturb the oil from returning flawlessly by the gravitation in the return line. So whenever fitting a new turbo, remember to thoroughly inspect the oil flow lines and related systems, such as crankcase ventilation and oil separation from the blow-by gases. In the next episode, we're gonna talk about foreign objects in the turbo. I'm Robin, and thanks for letting me show you what's under the hood. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe, and ring the bell so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And if there's something specific that you want me to do a video on in the future, don't forget to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.